Hello guys and welcome back again to another episode of the Babylonian's Crypto Channel. So today I'm very excited to share with you about the Cosmos ecosystem and I think this is a very interesting project to look at and it's something that you definitely would not want to miss. So I spent a bit of time reading out on the whole ecosystem and how all the different moving parts and pieces uh, fit together in the Cosmos ecosystem. So if you are new to Cosmos, I'm sure you have heard uh, or seen some of these terms before. Tender mean BFT, Cosmos SDK, IBC, hubs and zones and all, all these uh, terminologies over here. So today I'll do a very quick and brief breakdown of uh, what does all these things mean. So I hope this video will be helpful for those who are new and want to understand more about it. So to start off, what is Cosmos? And the way I will understand it is like they are the WordPress of blockchains. So imagine when you want to uh, create some website, you last time it used to be very difficult, right? Because you have to create like, uh, you have to write uh, HTML and CSS and JavaScript and all this code to, to build a website from scratch. But now with WordPress, you can actually build a website very easily with just themes and plugins. And I think this is what Cosmos is also trying to do. So building a blockchain is very hard. And how they define blockchain is uh, there are three parts to it. So blockchain is made out of the networking uh, component, the consensus, and lastly is the application. So networking is meant by how the nodes talk to each other, how they propagate information uh, from one node to another. And consensus is the nodes agreeing to the state of the data because blockchain after all is just a data that is stored in blocks that are chained together uh, sequentially and to actually build a blockchain you have to consider all these uh, things uh, which are very technical especially for the developers who are new into the blockchain space so what cosmos does is it makes it very easy for you to build blockchain and how it does it specifically is it combines this consensus and networking component into a package. And this package is what you call the tender mean. So this saves developers hundreds of hours on designing a new blockchain from scratch. And for any new blockchain develop developers, they want to come in, they just have to focus on the application part of it, rather than having to think about all the technical parts of uh, how blockchain works. So over here, you see that Ethereum allows anyone to actually build uh, applications on top of it by writing some smart contract codes and you just push it uh, to the ethereum network right so this is already made easy anybody can do it within minutes by now but cosmos is actually allowing you to deploy new blockchains so it's not applications but it's blockchain and why is the difference because application you are still using the ethereum network so you are not a sovereign chain in itself you are still dependent on the ethereum nodes the ethereum validators and also the ethereum governance but what it means to build and deploy your own blockchain is you are sovereign that means you are you are creating your own blockchain and you can define the rules of it so you are not a tenant living under someone else's roof but you are your own house right so that is what it means to uh, be a sovereign blockchain and some of the benefits of it includes also you can create a public and private blockchain because you can define who the validators are and the permission settings as well so the end goal of cosmos is they want to create an internet of interoperable blockchains so they want to make it easy for everyone to just create blockchains very easily in 15 minutes you can just deploy a new blockchain over the weekends and this is made easy by tendermint bft which packages the networking and consensus into one single engine and cosmos sdk is an ecosystem of modules so it's like a like like what i mentioned is like wordpress is a plug and play plugin so like some of the uh, modules now include governance staking slashing so you can very easily uh, activate some of these modules in your blockchain and you don't really have to build all this out from scratch by writing the codes so what is IBC? IBC stands for Inter-Blockchain Communication and what it means is it allows different blockchains to talk to one another. 
because right now most of the blockchains are in silo and they don't really communicate and send data to one another and you have to build a lot of uh, awkward bridges to, to be able to do that and Sunny phrase it or term it in a way that is called the standardization of shipping containers because last time the shipping and logistic industry only prosper and start booming with the shipping containers when when everybody agree on the standard and specification of the containers and it makes it much easier for everyone to facilitate trade because now you can now you know what is the standard so they are trying to do something like that to create this uh, standardization standardization of uh, shipping containers in blockchain and a standard way of sending data and transferring tokens from one separate blockchain to another separate blockchain because in the future when there are hundreds and thousands of blockchain there needs to be a way to be able to communicate to each other and that is really what ibc is all about so how it works specifically is you can see over here this uh, a and b so a and b are like different blockchains and there's a three-step process so one is bonding second is proof relay and third is validation so bonding means that let's say if you want to transfer some tokens from blockchain A to blockchain B, you first have to lock up your tokens. You have to bond your tokens on blockchain A and then a relayer would submit that proof to blockchain B saying that, okay, uh, my tokens on blockchain A has already been bonded and locked. So blockchain B will verify that. And once it sees that, okay, it's uh, locked already, then it would uh, create and mean the equivalent of the tokens on blockchain A on uh, blockchain B. So that, in a nutshell, is how uh, IBC works and how it allows for the transfer of tokens. But then there's one problem here, and that is, let's say if it grows to hundreds and thousands of blockchains, it would not make sense to have each of these blockchains creating channels between one another. So this would be very inefficient because it will, as the number of blockchain grows, so does the shipping channels. So one way to solve it is through a concept called hub and zone and it's very simple it's just uh, having a hub at the center and having different zones and these different zones are like different blockchains connecting to the hub. So this hub is like a central point where it allows IBC token transfer from all these uh, different zones and blockchains to one another as long as they are connected to this hub. So right now, the main hub is called Cosmos Hub or the Cosmos blockchain. Remember that Cosmos itself is a blockchain and the Cosmos blockchain is a hub that allows these uh, IBC transfers between different blockchains. So all these transactions through IBC actually have a fees, have a related transaction fees and all these fees actually accrue back to the atom stickers and that is where there's a very big value accruer tokenomics right here if this is going to expand and become big so a way to think of it is that cosmos hub is a port city just like how you know you have different airports and different uh, ports in the world right like let's say if you want to uh, ship something or or a flight from one country to another country not all of them is through a direct flight or direct route most of the time is through some kind of a transit route through a through a central port and that is what cosmos hub is all about and also speaking of Ethereum compatibility, Cosmos itself has a blockchain called Ethermin and now they have rebranded to EVMOS or something, I don't know how to pronounce, but it is a EVM compatible blockchain on Cosmos. So in the future, you see that one of this zone here will be EVM compatible and all the Ethereum applications and dApps or smart contracts will be deployed on this uh, EVMOS and they are able to transact and transfer tokens and talk to all the hubs that are connected to the Cosmos hub over here. So again, coming back to the point of how Cosmos talks to other blockchains, right now it can only do so for IBC enabled chains. So meaning only blockchains that are using the Cosmos SDK and those blockchains that have enabled the IBC module. But it can't do so for proof of work chains like Bitcoin and Ethereum. Because there's uh, this difference between the finality, uh, fast finality chain versus probabilistic finality chain. And finality is meant by can you confirm that the state is correct? So, proof of work 
blockchains usually you take six blocks or more to confirm because there is a probability that there will be a fork of the blockchain when two miners mine the same block at the same time and they all propagate to to different parts of the nodes so that is what is meant by probabilistic but deterministic chain like proof of stake is like when the block is mined it is already confirmed already it's it's uh it's final so ibc only works for fast finality chains and that's why it can't work for Ethereum and Bitcoin right now. But there are solutions being built on it right now while waiting for the proof of stake uh, on Ethereum, the Casper, to come, come through. So one of them is called the Gravity Bridge. And how it works is like this Gravity Bridge is the Ethereum's packed zone. So how this Gravity Bridge works is very similar to how the IBC works. So you have the four components, the Ethereum contract called Gravity.so. So this is like when you send ERC20 tokens to this contract and it will lock and bond up these uh, Ethereum tokens, then you will have a relayer to communicate this information to the Gravity Cosmos module. Then once it's confirmed that it's locked and bonded, then it will mean and transfer this uh, equivalent uh, ERC20 tokens on the Cosmos blockchain to whatever blockchains that you want to send to on the Cosmos ecosystem. So that is Gravity Bridge and this should be coming by the end of uh, Q4. And when this is live, you will see the Ethereum blockchain and the Cosmos blockchain start talking to one another. And then there's also the Gravity DEX. So Gravity DEX is a DEX that is built on the Cosmos hub itself. And Emeris is the front-end application that actually uses Gravity DEX. So this DEX will allow the transfer and swap of tokens between uh, Ethereum and Cosmos. So Bitcoin Bridge is also one thing they are working on. And right now they are testing it on Testnet already. It's already live. And all these uh, Gravity and Bitcoin Bridge transaction fees also accrue back to Atom stakers. So this is another uh, added value accrual for the Atom token holders. Next, the third point is interchain security. So interchain security is meant by sharing security. So what does security mean? Security in the context of proof of work is measured by hashing power. So let's say Bitcoin, the hashing power is very, very high. You need a lot of uh, mining machines and hashing power to mine Bitcoin. Then it is said to be very secure because you need a lot of money, millions and billions of dollars to be able to hack Bitcoin. But from the context of proof of stake, what does it mean to be a secure blockchain? And it is measured by the value lock, the number of tokens you need. Because Tendermint BFT is based on the two-third consensus. So if you want to uh, hack, a, hack a blockchain or be a malicious actor, you have to have more than uh, one-third of the nodes voting power. So if the value lock is higher, then in the cost to hack and attack, this uh, chain is going to be higher. And interchain security works by allowing the sharing of security between chain. So let's say if I want to build a blockchain on Cosmos SDK, I'm a small and new chain, the security of this chain will be very, very weak because there will, the value lock will be very small. And anyone can just buy out the tokens and be a validator and attempt to uh, do some malicious transactions. But what Interchain allows is that you can share the security. So the Atom stickers in the Cosmos Hub would be sort of like the people, the validators, validating the blocks for the smaller chain. And in return for it, the smaller chains would pay the parent chain, which is the Cosmos Hub. They are native tokens through inflation or other means, or maybe some kind of transaction fees. And again, all these fees would accrue value and add value to the Atom holders. Okay, so next is scalability. And what does scalability mean? So scalability can be thought of as scaling vertically or scaling horizontally. And scaling vertically, it just means like having more optimization features, like having higher transaction speed, higher transaction throughput, storing more data in the blocks and uh, all these kind of uh, features. But eventually it, it will get harder and harder, right? Because if you think about Ethereum, there are thousands and thousands of devs built on top of one single shared state machine. And it is this one super big computer that's going to become more and more powerful. And this will put a lot of strain eventually in the long run, right? And this is what Solana is actually trying to do, but Cosmos is doing it different. Uh, they are doing it through 
another approach which is horizontally. And what horizontally means is, let's say you imagine Aave on Uniswap, they have reached some kind of transaction limit throughput and they want to scale, what can you do? So let's say you look at this Ethermin hub here, let's say Aave is deployed on this uh, Ethermin hub, you can actually deploy the same app onto multiple parallel blockchains. So Cosmos SDK makes it very easy to deploy and create all these parallel blockchains. So you imagine there'll be multiple uh, Ethermin blockchains with the Aave contract running on them concurrently. And all of this will be connected to the Ethermin hub. So instead of Aave running on one single blockchain, now you have Aave running on five or 10 different blockchains. And this makes scaling theoretically infinite. So this will be pretty interesting to watch out for. This is all the blockchains that are built on top of the Cosmos SDK and Terra is the largest. So Terra Luna wouldn't have exist without Cosmos SDK. So the Cosmos SDK and the technical fundamental developments and progress is very important and is core to the Terra ecosystem also. And some of the other notable blockchains are Crypto.com, Torchain, Osmosis, and then also Akash, Certik, uh, Band Protocol, and you can see uh, many of the other blockchains here. And if you go to the Cosmos website, you can see that there are about 200 plus apps and services built on top of Cosmos right now. And here are all the things that are built using the Cosmos SDK. So this is a huge ecosystem and there are billions of dollars actually built on top of Cosmos. And if you look at this map of zones over here, it is very interesting because over here it shows all the IBC transfers between the different blockchains. So a lot of it is, so you can see that this is the Cosmos hub over here and you can see all these, uh, all, all, all these arrows are actually the, the data transfer between different blockchains and all these fees will eventually go back to the Atom stickers. So Terra is going to appear soon once they submit the proposal in and it gets approved which will take about two weeks time. And you will see more use case for UST and or, or like different tokens from other blockchains also coming to the Terra ecosystem. Okay, so to do a quick summary, Cosmos allows you to deploy blockchain very fast and very easily uh, and also very user friendly. So they have also this uh, Starport toolkit and I'm not too familiar with it because I never use but I think it's familiar to the Truffle and the Ganache uh, framework on Ethereum. Basically, it's a very UI friendly uh, platform for you to deploy blockchains very easily. And there will be hundreds and thousands of blockchains in the future and they will talk to one another through IBC. And Cosmos Hub can be thought of like a, like a port city that is the central of all these IBC transfers in the same way as how a port facilitates trades between different cities and countries. And the busier the port, the higher the value it will be for Atom. And if you look at the network effect of this chart over here, you can see that if there are more blockchains coming into this space that will use Cosmos SDK in the future, the number of connections and different channels and pos possibilities will increase exponentially. And you can see that let's say if there are 12 blockchains right there will be already be 66 interactions now imagine if this is hundreds or thousands of blockchains what would the interaction be right and cosmos hub is right at the center of it so that's why they really have a very huge potential moving forward and terra also has, has given them some grant about 150 million for them to further uh, push their, their developments and progress and I think Cosmos is a very interesting project to look at. So I hope this video gives you a better understanding of the Cosmos ecosystem and also have a better understanding of the thesis and the long-term vision of Cosmos. So if you find this video helpful and value adding, I would appreciate if you can like this video, subscribe and uh, share. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment down below and I'll see you in the next video.